So uh, we are now on the next leg of the journey. Uh, already behind me uh, is 847, which is 20%, almost, it will be 20% probably during the time of, of uh, my speaking if I get off on one of my um, meanderings in a second, which can always happen when I get talking. But basically uh, getting on for um, 20% of the incredible journey behind me and uh, obviously still 80% of those 4,400 miles up ahead um, to just check how much time there's already been spent engine time that's 1057, 1057 minutes this is this is now um, leaving uh, just left um, Yes, this is perhaps not necessary at the moment. Um, this is going to Vienna from Bratislava. Just left Bratislava, still in Slovakia. The motorway uh, splits so that this way you go to Dürr and Budapest, and uh, this way is Vienna or Wien, as it's called. Wien, 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 Nordu allein, la 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 la. la. So anyway, um, we're going to Vienna. Um, if that means nothing to you, it certainly means something to me because I have to appear before a very august company. And I got the final attendance list by email last night and in the hotel, off the Wi-Fi in the hotel, and uh, there are names there that uh, I've only dreamed of meeting, and, uh, and yet they, they are people that I'm now going to be addressing. So that's a little bit scary. Um, and. Uh, Thankfully, I didn't forget to shave. Um, and uh, basically, yeah, some people that I have met before, though, in previous networks. Um, yeah, a few Horth people are there, and uh, a few uh, HLB people are there, and some other people that I've just met with along the way. Here we come to the old border between Bratislava, or between Slovakia, pardon me, and um, and Austria. At this point for a while actually, and I omitted to say this yesterday, um, the whole of the Danube, both sides of the Danube flow into Slo Slovak territory. Later on it becomes the border, uh, slightly later on. But this, at this point, as you saw, we crossed the, the, well, you didn't see it actually, but we crossed the Danube back then and we were still in, in uh, Slovakian territory, but there's not much of that. There's not much of such uh, territory and it wasn't historically um, way back part of Slavonic territory. Um, at the time of the great Moravian Empire. But there was a small enclave on this side of the Danube, which is Slavic, not big, not big. Um, and uh, now we are in Austria. The first thing you notice, I suppose, is the commitment to uh, alternative energy. Um, obviously the government in this country has given more money to it. Austria tending to have more money per head of population than, uh, than a lot of other countries. It's one of the highest GDP countries in Europe. It's not necessarily so heavily populated, although it's a small country. Um, but it's got a balanced economy. Vienna is quite a big financial hub. Um, and I tend to come along this way quite a lot uh, when I get whenever I go to Bratislava I use the uh, the airport in Vienna because Bratislava airports a very second degree airport even though it serves the capital it's more like one of the airports you'd see in Poland near um, 
near Wrocław or, um, or uh, Krakow rather than the airport that um, serves Warsaw. It's, it's much more of a, of a sort of local kind of thing with a few flights to particular places but it doesn't handle, I don't suppose it would even handle a million a year, I don't know the statistic but I'd be surprised if I went on on uh, the internet and discovered that it's that it uh, that it actually handled more than a million passengers a year, I think it's quite considerably less than that. Whereas obviously Vienna probably handled several million. So uh, a different ball game, and of course re revamped totally recently, so that uh, you know there are several terminals, and you can't. Uh, work out where the old stuff is that you used to like going to anymore because you're in a different part now um, so I don't know whether 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 Mozart and Liszt is anymore where I used to like to go and have a Wiener schnitzel that's the the national food of, of Vienna or the the local most famous local delicacy not the only one of course um, and uh, yeah Coming down here, obviously, regularly, I usually am driven by the company taxi, corporate taxi service, who um, have, give us a good rate, because we use them on a regular basis, and there's usually the same guy taking me, unless he's unwell or something, then he gets a friend to stand in, but uh, usually I'm a little bit knackered and I'm using the time just to sleep. So, uh, and often it's, you know, especially if it's been in winter, the end of the working day is already dark, so I'm not getting to see all of those uh, details that I can show right now. Um, some of the signs by the roadside have been just welcome signs. Others, other signs have been, um, you know, telling people what to do, as German-speaking world has a penchant for doing um, and so you know there was, we just passed a sign saying um, what you have to uh, what you have to do, to do in, in the this is this is what you have to do in a, a case of fog yeah um, and depending on how many of these semicircles you can see ahead that's how fast they're guiding you to to ride down the road in the case of fog so if you can only see one at a time of those semicircles, you should be at 40 kilometers an hour. Um, what happens when you can't see any of them? <laughs> That's a good question. And I've been in, uh, I've driven in blizzards and fog where even one of those things at a time, well, you'd, you'd see one and then you wouldn't see any and then you'd see another one again. But I suppose you've got to really go at something like 10 miles an hour until you, uh, until you're until you're well enough out of it, and just hope that other people are doing likewise. If you do crash into something at under 30 kilometres an hour, then you are likely to survive it. Whether your car is or not is another matter. Um, so, uh, 